good afternoon everyone Let us now continue with what we were discussing in the previous class. We were, yes, we were talking about the life story, the biography of a very special woman called Eleanor Nicole. She was famous as a lip reader. And this is a biographical note written by Alistair Palmer, where he writes about how she became such a great lip reader. So the last class we talked about how she became a lip reader. Today uh, we conclude that chapter. In fact, there is only one or two paragraphs left. So the first case that she handled was the case of the petrol station manager, where the petrol station manager was indicted. He was uh, considered to be guilty or the prosecutors were discrediting him because the charge was that he attacked a customer. So after examining the videotape, the CCTV, tape, the uh, footage, Eleanor Nicole comes to the conclusion that it was, the, it was not the manager, but the customer who was drugged because his speech was slurred. So there is no audio since it is a CCTV footage. But since she is an expert lip reader, she could understand by the way the lip movements of the customer was changing that he was on drugs. His speech was slurred. This is the word that uh, she uses. His speech was slurred. Okay, so we have the uh, yes, and what happened? His speech was slurred, and he made an attempt. He made an attempt to uh, get the uh, till that is still is the money box. He tried to get the money box, and that is why. Uh, he was uh, attacked by the manager. So he tried to get hold of the money box. That is the till. Till means, uh, here means money chest. Okay. Here the box in which money is kept. So the, from the way he spoke, Alda Sambashna Federal Lavaru, he was on drugs. So that is how the uh, case is solved. So the uh, manager is acquitted and it, it, they found that they, it was the customer who was at fault. That is how the case was dismissed. Okay, so we come out to the last paragraph. Last paragraph of this uh, biography. Glad to see, please read that last paragraph. Armed with Nicole's evidence on what the victim had said, a second jury took just five minutes to acquit the manager. Eleanor Nicole is unique. She is the only lip reader in Britain accredited by the Expert Witness Institute. Her energy is astonishing. At present, she has, uh, she has 198 cases pending and still finds time to look after her two children. How does she manage to do it all? List plus delegation, she replies without hesitation. The police must hope that its secret weapon never puts 
retirement on one of her lip of her lips thank you thank you guys so here uh, you can see that uh, it, it was because of the evidence that nicole gave that the petrol station manager was acquitted means allowed to go otherwise he would have been unnecessarily put in prison because with no fault of his so that is how the petrol station manager was acquitted means left free acquit is the opposite of convict convict means you are put in a, you are uh, had to have committed a crime so acquit means allowed to go free so acquit they are these are opposite words convict and acquit so the judge was easy, it was easy for the judge because there is now evidence because there is evidence so, so the second judge within 5 minutes he allowed the manager to go free so he, she is a special woman so that's why they now other says eleanor nicole is unique unique means special so she is unique means she is special why is she special because she is the only lip reader in a uh, britain accredited accreditation number got to learn in ba accreditation number so it accreditation means certification okay. she is uh, she is the only person who is certified by the witness institute so in london they have a, a expert witness institute which tries to uh, certify people who are working with the police so they have certified her that uh, she is uh, a capable person which can, whose services can be used by the police so she is the only person who has been accredited by the london witness institute for uh, the, helping the police and she has uh, she is so uh, uh, full of energy though she is a disabled person she is more able than many normal people so she has got a tremendous amount of energy she has 198 cases pending that is the police is heavily depending the law and order situation is heavily depending on the services of elinor nicole for solving the issues that the society is facing and it does not mean that she is completely dedicated to this profession she also is able to look after her man, uh, family well she has two children and she is very well capable of taking care of her family also so she she is a person who who very delicately balances her life her professional life as well as her family life so the author is asking her how does she able to do this and elnor nikhil uh, replies list plus delegation so you must have heard this term delegation when you uh, learned management what is the meaning of delegation to delegate something to someone what is the meaning of delegate or to delegate the process of delegating work to someone is called delegation can anyone tell me what is the meaning of this delegation so these are the secrets of our success so list is uh, something we will all understand that is made to make a list of what you have to do so what is delegation exactly yes we will to uh, represent that is somebody on my behalf doing the work is called a delegation so i all the work i don't have to do certain things some others can do so dividing the jobs and distributing to others that is called delegation in management so if you learn management it's very interesting to learn management it is useful also in life because you should not think that all the job has to be done by me illa nan thana cheyanam nammal chindikanda avashyam so there are many things which can be shared by others you can share the work with others so that process of sharing the work with others is called delegation so that is how she manages to keep her uh, life balance that is she is able to do delegation and at the same time she has got list she maintains a list this is also a good habit that is you have to prepare a list of, which is uh, nowadays called a 
to do list let us make a list of the things which we have to do so we we our life becomes organized that is i know what are the things that i have to do today so if you have a proper order proper arrangement of what are the things that i have to do then it is easy for you to organize your life when when your life is organized it is uh, uh easily managed and you become successful in life so that is the uh, process that is the secret that nicole really reveals to the author alistair palmer that she maintains a list of the things that she has to do and she also delegates uh, work to others ellam avaru thane etedukkada chala karyangalu mattullavarku cheyan pattana karyangalukke avarku cheyanayittu kodukka so that is called delegation and uh, the author is concluding with the sentence he says that uh, so if she is making a list let us hope that she uh, puts never puts retirement in one of her list so she she should never retire because if she retires from this field the police will be handicapped they will lose uh, one of their major weapons in the fight against terrorism and criminal movement so that is why the author hopes author says that the police should pray the police should hope that nicole never puts retirement in one of her list but to do list cheyanulla karyangalile retirement varadirikkanam karena retirement vannu kenjal she will stop serving the police okay so this is about uh, nicole next we move on to the uh, next chapter that is in conversation so this is a, a conversation between a man and a wife and this is a series of conversations which you will have not only in this text but also in the text that you have for the fifth semester uh, so this is the first in that series of conversations titled in conversation 1 so it is a conversation between a man and his wife and who are these people it is being introduced in this first conversation so the man his name is kannan he is an executive with aol autos so it is an automobile company and his wife priya is a lecturer in hp college she has done her phd in teaching grammar she is an english teacher poor kannan gets corrected whenever he tries to talk to his grammarian wife in english so kannan always tries to speak in english at home and therefore because his wife is a grammarian a grammarian is someone who is an expert in grammar because he is a, she is an expert in grammar she always corrects the language of kannan he, he, she corrects his mistakes when he speaks in english so these uh, conversations that we are going to learn from this chapter onwards all these conversations will be uh, dealing with different common errors that indians make So why do we make errors in using the language it is because of the influence of our mother tongue okay so it is it is called mother tongue interference it is uh, shortly referred to as mti this uh, mother tongue interference what is mother tongue interference that is uh, we are we have a particular structure for our regional language for our mother tongue that is Uh, malayalam has a particular word order a structure but the structure of english is different so we try to speak in the structure of malayalam and that causes most of the errors that we make in english so this is uh, so the, the most of the errors that we discuss here are because of such a mother tongue interference so let us look at the conversation now let us read the conversation now so here uh, 
the you can see from the picture that it is a scene from the kitchen they are going to prepare food in the morning and there is some problem there in the house okay let us now read that conversation Lakshmi and Lubna. Hello. Hello. Yes. So one, one person can read us. Lakshmi can read us Kannan, and uh, Lubna can read us Priya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Karnata. Yes. Good morning. Uh, are we ready to serve breakfast? Uh, no, we aren't. Uh, one of the burners on the stove isn't working and the microwave oven is on the blink. Kannan, what is wrong with the microwave? I am not understanding what you said. It isn't working, yeah. by the way. It is not, I'm not understanding, but I don't understand. Can I be specific, specific? The microwave isn't working or the microwave isn't understanding? Priya, the microwave isn't working. I mean, is it wrong to say? Uh, wrong, wrong to say understanding. Can I, oh, now I am understanding. Yeah. Okay. So here, uh, there are some errors that Kannan makes and Priya is correcting those errors. The problem with Kannan is that he doesn't understand that his errors are being corrected when she makes some statements. He doesn't understand that it is his errors being corrected by his wife. So the first uh, error that he makes is this. So it is very common for Indians to use ING form every, everywhere. A lot of ING form you see in a normal phenomenon. For example, when you ask where you where do you come from? Suppose I ask you where you come from, you immediately say that I am coming from Trishu. So for regular actions, if you are living in Trishu and you go to college every day. If it is for a regular action, we cannot say I am coming from Trishur. Coming from Trishur is a temporary activity which is indicated by the ING form, a continuous form. So it is just enough to say I come from Trishur. It is a very common Indian error in using English. So I am not understanding is not required. He just has to say I don't understand. So I am not understanding is wrong. I don't understand is correct. So that is what she corrects him in the next uh, uh, dialogue that she speaks. By the way, it is not I am not understanding, but I don't understand. So this correction is also not understood by Khan. And therefore he says, be specific. He is be clear, that is what he says. The microwave isn't working or the microwave isn't understanding. Okay. So the microwave isn't working. So here uh, you can see that it is a it is something that is happening now. The microwave oven is not working. So that is something that is happening now. But the same ing form cannot be used with understanding. So you just have to say, I don't understand. So that's why she says, I mean, it is wrong to say understanding. And again, Kannan repeats the same mistake and says, now I am understanding. And therefore she exclaims, Priya exclaims, oh God. So this uh, exclamation, oh God, God, indicates the frustration of Priya that his husband is not able to follow 
the simple rules of the english language while speaking and especially because she is a teacher teachers are very intolerant of errors so teachers do not like errors to happen so they will continuously go on correcting you it is very difficult to live a life with a teacher because she is likely to correct you every now and then so that is why uh, she is continuously correcting him and kannan is unable to understand the corrections that priya is making make, or he pretends that he doesn't understand so he, that's why he repeats the same mistake and says now i am understanding so instead of that what should he have said he should have said now this is what he should have said now i understand this is the correction instead of saying now i am understanding he should have just said now i understand so like i am not understanding is wrong and i don't understand is correct similarly now i understand is the correct usage instead of now i am understanding okay these are the errors in this part okay yes continue with the passage அடுத்த வரிகளும் வச்சோம் லக்ஷ்மி லுக்னா ஹலோ எஸ் சார் நான் வாய்ச்சு வாய்ச்சு கண்ணு வரிக்கு why don't you use the gas stove then priya i told you one of the burners in faulty kannan what one of the burners are fake actually he brought the stove a cup couple of months go only a go only priya can i please say one of the burners in faulty can i why should i say it again don't you know it already it is not it is not right to say one of the burners are faulty you mean to say all the burners are faulty oh my god priya not uh, not all the burners are faulty only one of them one of them is and kannan please say we bought this stove just a couple of month months ago kannan that's what i said you said we bought this stove a couple of months ago only that is not correct kannan it is correct i have got the bill with me okay we will uh, continue later so for let us now look at the errors that they have made um, uh, rather kannan has made the errors so here uh, the first error that he makes here is about the use of singular and plural so this is a basic rule in the english language of subject uh, so this is very common uh, this is something which we everybody has to be aware, aware of when you use the english language of subject verb agreement that is a singular subject will take a singular verb okay singular subject will have a singular verb and a plural subject will have a plural verb so one of the uh, burners means we are talking about one so we have to use is suppose all the burners 
then we can say the Bernal's R. When I'm talking of one of the four uh, Bernal's, I'm speaking about one and one is singular. And with singular, we have to use is. Singular in the word as sir sound on the verb. So the subject verb agreement is a major rule in the use of English grammar. And this is the next error that Kannan makes, and it is being corrected by Priya. And the next uh, mistake that he makes is we bought the stove a couple of months ago only. He only allowed uh, from you see. I told you just now only this is, this is also another error. This is a very common usage when you are speaking in English, casual usage. I told you now only. But the correct usage is this is the correct usage. I told you now only. That's right, glad to see. I told you just now. So uh, the usage of now unnecessarily in certain places is a wrong usage. So here she corrects his uh, mistake by saying that we just we bought the stove just a couple of months ago. So instead of using that only, she has put the just here and says we bought the stove just a couple of months ago. And the interesting thing in this conversation is that Kanan uh, does not understand the errors uh, that uh, Priya is correcting. And he says, when Priya says, please say one of the burners is faulty, he is asking her, why should I say it again? Don't you know it already? One of the fault burners are faulty. So he is asking uh, Priya, why should I say it again? I have already said it. So she again corrects him. She says it is not right to say that one of the burners are faulty because one of the burners means it is singular. Burner galil the singular runner. So it should be one of the burners is faulty. So it is not right to say one of the burners are faulty. So he misunderstands it and he says, you mean to say all the burners are faulty? Oh my God. So she again corrects him. She is very patient. She again corrects him. She says, not all the burners are faulty. Only one of them is. Only one of them is. And Kanan, please say we bought the stove a couple of, just a couple of months ago. So he says, that's what I said. So she says, you said we bought the stove a couple of months ago only. This usage of only is not idiomatic. So there is something which is called idiomatic is or accurate use of language. So the, what is idiomatic and what is not idiomatic, we can only learn by experience. Tell a usage is idiomatic and that is acceptable. Yes. Uh, idiomatic can also be in uh, standard usage of language. Okay, Standard use of language is also referred to as idiomatic use of language. So certain expressions are not idiomatic and we should avoid in our conversations. So, idiomatic alata usage is number avoid. Idiomatic alata usage is now only, just now only, non-idiomatic usage. And such non-idiomatic usages should be avoided by users of the language. So she is telling him, you, you bought the, you said you brought, we brought the stove a couple of months ago only. That is not correct. So he says it is correct. I have got the bill with me. So he, yeah, he thinks that she is talking about fact. But she is not speaking about fact. She is speaking about the use of language. So that is the misunderstanding that Kanan has, that Priya is talking about fact, whereas she is not talking about fact. She is talking about the 
language that Kannan is using. So she says, I am referring to your language in idiomatic use. English, we don't say we brought this to a couple of uh, months ago. So that is the errors that corrected. Okay. Okay, the next. Yes, continue, continue with the. Kannan, what will we have for breakfast then? Priya, God. All right, go and get your bread. Kannan, sure. And I will get some eggs. I think I will get a dozen eggs. I don't think I have in enough money. A dozen eggs cost 15 rupees, right? Priya, a dozen eggs cost 15 rupees. Uh, there is some money on the dining table. Connect. There is only ten rupees. There is only uh, there. There are only ten rupees. Connect. Yes. Check if you like. Priya, here take this fifty rupees, uh, rupee note, and please hurry up. The children are getting late for school. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lukna and Lakshmi. So here. In this part of this conversation, the errors are those of uh, number and quantity. Okay. So, with, uh, so when you talk about nouns, there are two kinds of nouns: okay? countable and non-countable nouns. So certain things are countable, certain things are not countable. For example, sugar, salt, bread, etc. are not countable. Bread is not something that you count like that. You can say a piece of bread or a loaf of bread. Okay. Piece of bread is correct. A loaf of bread is also correct. But it is wrong to say uh, a sugar, a salt, a bread, etc. Because they are all measured in quantities. I can say that I, I want a kilogram of sugar. Okay. I cannot say that I want a sugar. It is not countable. So this is the series of errors that we have in the last part of this conversation. It is the errors of countable and non-countable things. So the first error that he makes is about talking about bread. bread But bread it is a mass. Bread is a mass. Quantity. So you cannot talk about a mass as uh, something. But you cannot talk about such uh, uncountable things in countable terms. Uncountable in the code are countable terms. So that is why she says that it is wrong to say a bread. So because the uh, kitchen is unable to function because of the uh, microwave trouble. So they decide to have bread in the morning. And uh, Kannan says that he would go to the nearby shop and buy a loaf of bread or a packet of bread. So she, Priya is more interested in correcting his errors and she says, you get some bread. 
or a loaf of bread but you can't get a bread a bread and what in the theta so that is the error that she he makes and priya corrects him so again uh, with countable things he is using uncountable adjectives apo some sugar some salt nu parayam but some eggs nu parayan pattilla because eggs are countable enginaano namukku uncountable inde kooda countable aayittulla adjectives use cheyan pattu so similarly uncountable aayittulla inde kooda enginaano countable use cheyan pattu adu pole countable inde kooda uncountable nu use cheyan pattilla for example when i talk about eggs i cannot say some eggs i can say a few eggs അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ടെൻ എഗ്സ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എ ഡസൺ എഗ്സ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ടു എഗ്സ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വൺ എഗ് എന്നൊക്കെ പറയാൻ നല്ലാതെ സം എഗ്സ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു അൺകൗണ്ടബിൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള സാധനമല്ല എഗ് മുട്ട എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സോ സം എഗ്സ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് സ്യൂട്ടബിൾ ഐ ക്യാൻ സേ ഐ സേ ഐ ക്യാൻ സേ എ ഫ്യൂ എഗ്സ് ഓർ എ ഡസൺ എഗ്സ് So the next error that he makes is about a dozen eggs cost 15 rupees. Here, subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement. A dozen eggs cost. A dozen, you know, remember, it is singular. A dozen. A is singular. So, singular round was sir sound over. Cost. You know, over. Cost. a dozen eggs cost 15 rupees and look at we are saying there is some money on the dining table money is considered to be a uh, quantity it is not uh, it is not considered to be a countable thing but rupees are countable okay money is uh, uncountable that is why she says there is some money but when you talk about rupees then you can say there are 10 rupees okay so money is uncountable but whereas rupees are countable so this is something which we have to be very careful about random ore tarathirulla sadhanangal aanengilum one is uncountable and the other is countable so that is why she says there is some money there is some money on the table so here he makes the error of saying there is only 10 rupees 10 rupees and what is it it is plural you can say there is only 1 rupee but i cannot say there is only 10 rupees so that's why she corrects him there there are only 10 rupees is the correct usage so here again there is a another usage she is teaching him that when you talk about a single note you can say that this is a this is a So it is a 50 rupee note. There are 50 rupees. It is a 50 rupee note. So when you are referring to the note as a singular quantity, a singular material, you can say that this is a 50 rupee note. But when I talk about the money that I have with me, you can say that you can say, you can say that there are 50 rupees with me. i talk about the note i can say that this is a 50 rupee note but when i talk about the quantity of money that i have i can say that there are 50 rupees with me so in this conversation we saw that there are errors what are the different kinds of errors that she uh, corrects him the corrects uh, the errors of subject verb agreement and uh, the use of ing the form of use of ing form then uh, subject verb agreement then the use of uh, 
now only etc the use of now only okay then uh, number quantity countable and uncountable things so these are the errors that uh, kannan made and it was corrected by priya now in the table below we have a list of the errors and the corrections and the rules the grammar rules which are related to these errors the first error is i am not understanding what you said okay the ing form i am not understanding is not used in the continuous form because the reason is here state verbs state in the manner avastha na state state verbs avastha sujipikkunnu so with, with these verbs we do not use the ing form one of the burners are faulty that is the next error that he makes and the rule is the verb must agree with the subject in person and number the verb must agree with the subject in person and number the third error that he makes is we bought the stove a couple of months ago only so only in english we use him but in other situations la la use here only should be used only in context where it is appropriate it should be placed close to the word you want to modify so it, it here it is not suitable to use only here so therefore it is inappropriate means not suitable for the situation the next error is i will go and get a bread from the neighboring shop the rule that makes it a mistake is non countable nouns such as advice food mathematics bread etc do not take articles or have the plural form angana oru vaadu verbs undu and the sugar salt etc water etc oru oru vellam ennu namukku parayan pattu you can say a liter of water or a glass of water okay you cannot say one water so this is the error that uh, this is the rule that makes this statement an error a dozen x cost 15 rupees so this is uh, the rule of the subjects composed of noun phrases that indicate such things as a measured distance a period of time a specific quantity of a sum of money when considered as a single unit take singular verbs appi dozen x nu parayumbe x plural anengilum ഈ ഡസൻ എക്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരൊറ്റ യൂണിറ്റ് ആയിട്ടാണ് കണക്കാക്കുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഇവിടെ ഈ എ വരാൻ തന്നെ കാരണം എ വരാൻ തന്നെ കാരണം ഒരൊറ്റ യൂണിറ്റ് ആയിട്ടാണ് ഈ ഡസൻ എക്സിനെ കണക്കാക്കുന്നത് എക്സ് എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ പ്ലൂറിലാണ് പക്ഷേ ഇത് മൊത്തമായിട്ട് ഈ ഇത് ഈ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ ഇതെല്ലാം ഉൾപ്പെട്ടു എയും ഡസനും എക്സും കൂടിയിട്ടാണ് സബ്ജക്ട് ഈ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് സിംഗുലർ സബ്ജക്റ്റ് ആണ് കാരണം എന്താണ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് കൺസിഡേർഡ് ആറ്റ് ആസ് എ സിംഗിൾ യൂണിറ്റ് സോറി here it is uh, so a dozen x cost 15 rupees so the subjects can composed of noun phrases that indicate such things as a measured distance a period of time 10 hours a specific quantity uh, that is uh, for example when i say a liter of water a sum of money when it is considered as a single unit takes in for example a 50 rupee note 50 rupee note ennu parayumbo it is a single note but it is the value of 50 rupees it is considered as a single unit they will take singular verbs the next one is there is only 10 rupees so he should say there are only 10 rupees so that the rule is the verb must agree with the subject in person and number okay that's it uh, so we stop with this chapter we will take up the next uh, chapter in the next class thank you for joining have a nice day goodbye